Hey, good morning. How are y'all doing today? Y'all are going to have to bear with me. I have a sinus infection, so I'll do my best. Uh, so I'm Peter Sissons. I work for uh, Morgan Wakeland and, and Janice. And um, I first wanted to start out just by really um, going over the technical side. So I'm the technical guy. Uh, I'm going to go over what flavor of project-wise you know, Textile is doing. And I'm going to show you sort of how it works. Just a very high level, um, open a project, um, show you how you can actually view files you know, without, without open projects. But I did want to thank um, our steering committee because without Janice and Randy and Mark's um, support, really the resources they give us is immeasurable. We, we need something, they say, if it's reasonable, they give it to us. So I just wanted to point that out that um, that's, it's very important. If we didn't have support, we, weren't, we wouldn't be able to do it. Um, so as Brent said, that this, this file right here uh, is in project-wise. So Brent was working on this in project-wise at his hotel. Um, and, and so when you close project-wise, um, it, it's still checked out. Um, so I'm going to close project-wise because I want to show you, you know, sort of our, our flavor project-wise. What we have is a um, is a cloud-based version. So some of y'all that uh, were maybe at last year's uh, short course and Diana talked about um, the project wise that Text.Dot used before, that was a uh, it, it was not a cloud-based project wise. It was a project wise that everything was internal. So our integration server was internal, our caching servers were internal, and we had some struggles with our network. And so. What we did was we picked a project wise that's cloud based. So, cloud based means that all the integration servers, um, all the, the heavy lifting is in the cloud. Uh, the only thing that we have to rely on, other than our computers, of course, is what I kind of deem our, our spigot of internet. So, our first, you know, when we first started, our internet was um, not very good. And we, we obviously saw that. And so with, uh, with Janice and Randy and Mark's push, you know, we, we now have like a 900 megabit plus connection, which uh, every single district feeds from. So as long as we have a good connection from the internet to our district offices, really project-wise works great. So uh, I do want to point out um, real quick, just the way that our project-wise you know, what, how you configure it if you're at your office. So, if you're at your office in at TechStock, um, what you're going to do is you're going to pick a, a caching server. Now, I don't have the official list of caching servers. It's, there's actually like 36 of them. Uh, this was a, the, our beta. But in my case, I work for, for Maureen, right, at 150 Riverside. So, what I would do is I would pick any division and I would hit apply. Uh, but I'm on the road, so and when I'm on the road, I can't connect to my caching server. So this is sort of just like an FYI for all TechStop folks here that have a laptop. If you're using ProjectWise, if you are, you know, opening files and you're going from office to office, maybe you're in a training class in, in Austin for a week, you will want to either pick another caching server, which you have access to do, or just turn it off. So when I say none, that means there's no caching server. And so I keep saying caching server like, what's a caching server, right? Um, what a caching server is, it's just like your internet cache. I mean, when you go to Google and you type in butterflies, you type in Astros baseball, you're gonna cache some stuff. It's gonna cache temporary files. I think the definition is something like temporary files, right? Cache. And so it makes it where when you go to open it again, it is there ready and so it asks the server, hey, is this the most up-to-date copy? If it's the up-to-date copy, then it, it just opens it. If it's not the most up-to-date copy, it pulls the most up-to-date copy and then it opens it. So the cache helps us because our caching servers at the district office, they, they store files that everyone in that district might use. So if you have a designer that has already opened the files, when another designer or, or a supervisor or administration, anybody that wants to open those files, 
they're not going all the way to the cloud for them. Okay, they're going to the caching server. And the caching server says, hey, is it the right file? And if it says yes, it just opens it. So I just want to point this out because I, I actually, I, I obviously am an engineer lead and I know it and I messed up like on yesterday, I was trying to open something at the hotel and I'm like, why, will not, why won't it open? And it was because I was selected the division. So anyway, I just wanted to show that to you. Um, so I'm gonna open up our ProjectWise and, and just kind of go through a few steps. So obviously anybody that's open ProjectWise sees that that Bentley screen pops up. Um, so the way our project twice is configured is we have six data sources. So sometimes you have containers, sometimes you have data sources. Basically, these are the master files. So even though I have that file checked out, I've opened it, it's checked out to me, it's not the master file. The master file is in the cloud. I have a copy of it on my computer, and which is also in the cache, right? But it's not the official file. The official file is in the cloud. And the reason that's important is because if I, if my computer crashes, uh, maybe my hard drive crashes, maybe I decide to go on vacation to Hawaii and I don't have, and I have it checked out. Well, the official file is still up there. So if I'm a good, you know, steward of, of my files and I'm updating them constantly, you know, then they can at least get to them. So in this case, what we have is we have an archive, which at the moment we have nothing in. What our, what our goal, once we rolled into um, to January here and we have a little more time is we're going to go to the districts and pull their important data, their GPK files, their design files, stuff that is important that they want to reuse, you know, which, which Brent and I call our assets. So we want these assets in the cloud so you're not having to maintain a Drobo or a whatever you're keeping all your files on because there's no <laughs> network space for them their DVDs, their CDs. Um, that's just an accident waiting to happen. As we all know, um, we lose files that way. They're also centrally located. So then we also have four other containers. So we have districts 8, 1 through 8, 9 through 12, 13 through uh, 17, and 18 through 25. And so the reason that they're set up this way is um, really it's by how many users are in each container. So we originally had regions and we know that's evil, so we don't do that. But we now have, um, so we try to rethink it, like how are we gonna do it? So I, I kind of guesstimated how many users there were, and then I just drew lines, and I said, okay, I wanna make sure that it's a balance. So as you can see, district, you know, district one through eight has Fort Worth in it, there's a metro, obviously Houston and district 12. We have two metros, and, um, and 13 through set, uh, 17, and, and Dallas is here. So I just want to show you what happens when you open up ProjectWise at TechStot. You're always going to get this box. So this is because we do not have a single sign-on. Um, we don't have an integration that pulls a single sign-on yet. So we're hopefully that is going to happen. Um, I'll say it will happen, but hopefully it will happen soon. But at the moment, the nice thing about it is once you've logged in, um, you, your name doesn't, you know, once you type that in, you don't have to type it in again, then your password can be changed to whatever you want. So you, there's a tool to go in and change your, set your password, it doesn't expire. And um, in this case, I'm, I use my uh, home email password because I can type it fast and I don't have to forget it. If you do forget it, there's the same tool that lets you change it, lets you reset it, and it lets send it to your email address. So it's pretty simple. So, uh, you know, you're going to have to do this every day. You're going to have to, you want to open your files, you're going to click on that button, you're going to log in, and it's going to log in. So, hopefully I type my password in right. So, uh, the first, the first uh, project that I want to kind of show um, is the Dallas project. So, uh, Dallas is kind of unique, right? I'm from Houston, so I'm a Houston guy, you know, go Astros. Um, but not that I don't want the Rangers to win, um, but okay, so I'm from Houston, and but so we were in Dallas uh, two weeks ago, and uh, I met you know Ali, and um, and he's got a guy, Hazim, he man, he is so good. So we're you know, he's been trained, one guy, and he's decided that he's gonna put his whole project in project wise because he's tired of dealing with 
um, the drive space issue, frankly. So, so he's one guy that's been trained. He dumped a nine gigabyte project because um, it, it wasn't at you know the twenty percent. I mean, it was already starting to be developed, and so he dumped this whole project. And project wise, he ran the reference scans. He got everything connected, and he's working. And uh, and to me, that's just amazing because um, it, it was really the first district that. I mean, aside from San Antonio and San Angelo who had been using it, they really just went feet forward and didn't really worry about it, especially a mega metro district as I, as I deem Houston and Dallas. So uh, in this case, I'm gonna go to, to this district container and this first folder here, contracts, just so y'all know, y'all won't see that. We don't have it turned on, but right now I'm the Tech project wise administrator, so I see it. Um, and so in this case, um, since he had an existing project, uh, our, our workflow is to put everything in design. And the main reason we're putting everything in design is because under, under the access control, in this case I'm going to our master design files, when I select this folder, really the most important part about project why really what y'all care about is, can I open the file and can I write to the file? And if I can write to the file, can that guy over there write to my file? because I don't want him writing to my file, right? I mean, the surveyors don't want the designers writing to their files because surveys, you know, we want those to be static, right? And so in this case, you can see that he put all of his stuff, now this was a existing project and I wanted to, I really wanted to highlight an existing project because like Brent said, everything's not going in, right? Everything's not going in like right now. So um, the way that we mitigate that is we let them just take their existing folder structure and we say, please, please, pretty please, like just drop it in master design file. Because that way when NCT data has to support them or I have to support them or, or Eddie or Brent, whoever, they know exactly, we know where the stuff is. It's either, it's either segregated into our workflow or if it's an existing project, it's in that one place. Okay, so having said that, I'm gonna go to his files, which are located in um, very nicely done open roads and he's got a file here called this is the one I want to highlight right here this base file so uh, you know last week I sent an email out and said could you please send me your slide you know some screenshots of your 3d project if you have any well he, uh, he had not worked on it yet he really wanted to send me something so he's been working on it so I just really wanted to, uh, to give him a little credit here so I'm gonna, uh, first thing I wanna show you is those of us that don't use MicroStation anymore, right? We used to, we don't anymore. We really don't wanna get in it anymore. Um, and this is not just for MicroStation files, this is also for, uh, for Adobe. <coughs> or um, really any file that you can preview. Is you can do this thing called a, a photo preview, which I think should be renamed to like, you know, window in, I don't know, photo, it's not a photo, because photo would tell you that you're only gonna see a picture, but it's much more than a picture. So this, what I did was I clicked on, um, I clicked on the file, and then I clicked on photo preview. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, and basically, I have this file open. I mean, granted, I have it pre-cached, so I did that for presentation reasons, right? You don't wanna mess up the presentation. But if I were to have uh, clicked on it un uncached, it would just cache all my data. It would cache all those files so that I could just open it just like it's on my local computer because really that's where it is. Okay, so here I can zoom in, I can zoom out, but what's even cooler, which is what I want to show you, is you have, um, you have, these things are your models. So for those of us in 3D design, you know how it's like the new 3D design, it creates these models. And so we have 2D model and 3D models not the model, but the actual workspace in, in the file. And so every, every model I have would be listed over here. In this case, it's a default 3D model. And so check this out. I'm gonna hit rotate and use my microstation skills and just show you that I can check out, um, I can check this thing out and I can be like, wow, he's doing a great job. Okay, and so I don't have it open. I don't have it open. I'm a manager, right? I don't, I don't do 3D design anymore. I support it or whatever, but maybe, you know, Ali can, he could go over here and he can say, wow, he's doing a great job, okay? And so, but if I wanted to open it, 
I have really a few ways of opening it. So I'm going to open up this file. What I want to just tell everyone is, if you're in, if you're a Dallas designer, in this case, this is Dallas. It doesn't matter you, if you're a Dallas designer at the area office or a Dallas designer at the design office. You're in the Dallas design list. You have you have rights to edit anybody's stuff, and so that's uh, that's something that we we got to trust each other, right? <laughs> and it's something that we really want to to focus on, like make sure that you are polite, open stuff read only. And so in this case, you know, he knows I'm in it because I talked to him, but I'm going to open it read only. And, you know, so it's going to kick off the micro station, right? Okay. And so you're going to see this thing pops up every time. Um, and what it's doing is it's, um, it's downloading our workspace. So the other thing, while this is opening, that we did, we're doing here with our implementation is a managed workspace. And what that means is, in the managed workspace, I can, um, I could create a design standard, that, or I could help NTT create a design standard. I would say, and then NTT Data, who's administrating this thing, they could put it in your design standard without you even getting a new push of MicroStation. Like, what's our workflow today? If you want the new newest thing, you have to know where to stick it in your in data or wherever it goes. Right now, we don't have to worry about that. Now, um, well, once we all get rolled out, we'll theoretically have this ability to, I say theoretically, it, it does work. We just need to, we just need to make sure we do it. <laughs> so we say we can do it, we need to just do it. So I'm gonna switch to what we call a view control 3D and to show you that, um, and this is, again, uh, he's been working on this. So I, I just wanna show you, really the point of all of this is that this is after I, after I got through that garbage right there, right? It's just microstation. It's just a file. It's and it's not only a file, but you know it's re it's a reference file, and so I can do everything I would do in a reference file. I can zoom in, you know, so on and so forth. So that that right there is is powerful. Uh, so let me minimize this, and I want to go to another location. So all right, so I've shown you a Dallas thing, and in a minute I'm going to show you a Yoakum thing. But I want to show you that where where we are, and as you notice, every time I go into a different container, I got to type in password, which is not going to be that huge deal for y'all, unless you're jumping containers for some reason. Uh, which brings me to a point: like if you're in Houston doing a job for for Lufkin, or which is what we do, right? Uh, you're not your project files are not going to be in the Houston container; they're going to be in the Lufkin container. So all the jobs that are in, and, uh, and so here's an example of that. So this is a, well, we're in the design division, so I'm gonna be there. Um, so this is project, and we have some project planning documents that Brent and I sort of show. And I just wanna show you that in a PDF, um, and you notice that it's automatically doing something, right? It's automatically showing me my photo preview because that's what I did last. And so this is a uh, Adobe document, right? It's a map that I made, and I can I can print, I can zoom in. I don't have to open it, and I, that wasn't slow, right? That just opened. So the important thing really is to know that your 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 experience in project wise is going to be as fast as the connection you have to the internet or to your caching server, and if you have a caching server and you have a lot of files, you're really going to want to pre-cache things, which NTT Data can help you. I can show you how to do that. But opening files is just not that big a deal. Okay? So we got about 10 minutes left. I want to make sure we have plenty of time for questions. Um, let me just show you one other thing. Let me make sure I covered all my things. Okay, so I want to show you next is 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 sort of what we talked about, what I said a minute ago about like anybody in anywhere can open your stuff, right? What that means is that by default, everything is read-only. So if you have a project-wise account, a textile project-wise account, your textile employee, you can open up anything you want. Now obviously you want to, you know, the main thing that that's for is if you're a reviewer, you don't have to have a silo. If you're, if you're a plan reviewer, um, or maybe you're someone environmental and the environmental is looking for some cross-sections for an environmental document, 
um, they can, you know, the designer could just shoot you a, a link over and they can just open the files, it's no problem. But, uh, so this is another project. This is a project that is actually following our folder structure in Yoakum. And uh, this was, uh, to me, just a really cool uh, corridor. This is the, uh, the corkscrew bridge. And uh, what I want to talk about with here is there's a few things. Now, now the one that I'm about to show you is, it has been developed. And uh, let me zoom in here. Unfortunately, it, it doesn't remember you know, the last place you were, but, you know, if you're fast enough clicker, you can... Okay, so what I want to point out here is... Um, okay. So we've been doing this presentation all across the state, okay? And every time I go in this file, something is new. Uh, every time I look in this file... Now, Tim, uh, John Keha and, um, and Yoakum and Tim Couch is working on this. But uh, one day, um, the Corpus District, uh, their guy, Aaron Arroyo, he decided he wanted to have a, uh, a group of districts get together. He and, or Yoakum, Corpus, Farr, and Laredo. Okay, so they got together, and uh, well, unfortunately, Laredo wasn't able to go, but the day, uh, the day before, I was in this file. We were in a, we were in a district in Paris or something. There was nothing in here other than this, these lines. The next day, I open it up, and there's columns. And what I want to say here is um, we have to support each other in, in this new model, in this new workflow. If we don't learn from each other, uh, everybody's learning it. Everybody's, it's, not, it's new. I'm talking about 3D design, right? I mean, project-wise is, is also new. We, now that we have project-wise, you could call a guy and say, hey, I saw that you had some good columns, some vents, 3D stuff, the stuff that's hard in, in open roads. How did you do that? And he could say, hey, I have a file, why don't you go check it out? And then you, he just emails you the link of that file. And the way you do that is up here, you've got a little URL. If I were to click on it, it's gonna highlight it, and I could right click on it and copy it. And if I paste that URL into an email and send it, they just have to click on it. And they click on it, it goes right to that folder location. And so they can open it read only. Um, so to me, that's just really powerful. You know, that's, that's where we need to go. We need to make sure that the guy in Yoakum that's doing super good work can help the guy in Houston. Or the guy in Houston that's doing super good work can help the guy in Odessa. So anyway. Okay, so I want to stop there. Um, does anybody have any questions? I came in late, but uh, so so I, I get the, the feet first guy, you know, who he said, oh, I have this one project, and he could leap in and, and he could get it there. Um, I have a GEC, and they do a lot of our staff support, and, and they would be the people that I would direct to do the feet first and get us on board with project wise. And I, I do have a district resource who I'm working with to like, you know, what's our, our plan gonna be? But it does seem like one of the things is that right now we don't have contractor access. Right, so, so contractor plan, access is a... Um, well, my plan for yeah. now is it sounds like I, I personally have to drag all those files and it's not realistic for my, my, my load. So is that the only strategy I have right now to support the Project Wise mission? Um, right now you're... you're your way of doing it is going to right click and export out an unmanaged copy. If you're sharing the files and they don't have a project wise account, um, so uh, I think that you know, I understand that you know, like the gist of the question is how do we get outside people in so that we don't have to export the document? I mean, because basically, if I want to share this document with you and you don't have an account, I like have to right click on the file. Uh, let's say it's this one, I have to hit export it's going to pull up an unmanaged copy or an unmanaged copy, whichever one you pick, and then you're going to email it to them or Dropbox it to them. Okay, so what we're working on right now and we're, what we're, we're working with Bentley is best practices on how, how we are going to protect our security uh, as a tech side, as an organization. How can we protect our security but let people in? 
Okay, and it's complicated, and, and the reason it's a little complicated is because we have six data sources. But we didn't want to go with one data source because of performance. So we're working on that, and um, hopefully in, in the next month we'll have a, a good answer of, of how we're going to test it within the Austin district so that we can be close to it. So. That'd be terrific, especially something with the Austin district. Um, I wonder if there is at least a way to baby step toward it, the same way we do with contractors who we give yeah, the problem email is, access, yeah, email access. Yeah, I mean, the problem is, is it has to do with the way that our permissions are granted. Okay. And so if I were to give a contractor uh, an account, Right, so I give I give a, a, you know a common account this guy that I know and he's working on my stuff. If I give him an account, anybody can add him to any project, and so we need a we need a control mechanism to say that that guy can only do that one thing. And until we get that answered, we're not we, we need to be there before we can make that decision. Thank so, you for the explanation. No problem. Yes, sir. Uh, so I work in an area almost in a fairly rural area. Sure. Our internet is terrible. Okay. Uh, is there a is, is there a plan to upgrade to the more rural? Uh, so the offices? the answer to that is um, some some area offices, depending on where you are, even though they are rural, it depends on. Uh, right now, we have some network upgrades happening for some of them. Um, if you let me know. Um, but what uh, it, but what ultimately you're going to find is that if you just have a different workflow, so you pre-cache your stuff, whether you do it at night or whether you do it like right when you come in, once you've opened it, when things change, only little bits of files are coming. So really, we haven't seen a lot of problems. But let me know if you're having a problem, and I'll, I'll certainly give it a break. Yeah. So we can evaluate when maybe looking at the caching servers or office more or change our kind of how we calculate who gets a cash and serve and do those things. Okay, so let me just talk about that for you know, just a second. Um, you're going to love Project Y, right? Okay, because what has happened for some reason, and like I won't pretend to really understand it other than I know it's true, is that when we remove the Nobel Drive, because we're like the ones using Nobel, um, when we remove that Nobel constraint, all of a sudden stuff stops crashing. Also, if you have an a engineering laptop or engineering workstation, we need to get your BIOS and your video cards updated because those two things, really the two things combined, project wise, plus those two things, solves like a lot of crashes. So, good question. Yes, ma'am. What's the plan for the backup? Okay, so our, our Bentley, Bentley Managed Services manages our data. It's a cloud-based, cloud -based, and it's ba it has the same backup that TechStop does. So we have daily iterations, then weekly, then monthly, and then they're held. So but they have a 48-hour window to get us the data, although they say it's usually less than 24 hours. But we gotta keep in mind that that time does not start until NTT data puts the ticket in. So if you have a backup that you need, there you need to call the help desk. Don't I would pick up the phone, 512 302 help. Make sure you get to engineering services. They're super good. They'll know exactly what to do. There might be a backup on your cache, cache and server. There might be a backup in your so they have ways of getting it. But if there's nothing, there's a 40 hour window to get something. And then you would obviously, if you pick something two weeks ago, you get the Friday. Yeah. Yes, sir. Not at this time. Well, what our plan is is to get project data, which right now, as some of us know, is DCIS, DCIS live data from the data stream to auto populate some fields. We're working on that with Bentley right now. Um, that will auto populate a bunch of stuff. For us, uh, but it's not going to auto populate anything that's not from DCIS. So we would need to talk about it if we if it, and discuss it with our steering committee. Yeah. One last question. Are there any limitations to the storage unit? No. I mean, as in limitless as we can. I mean, I think with our contract, we have enough room. So 
what we want to make sure, and this is the last thing, you know, before we stop, is uh, there's some things that we want to make sure obviously are being deleted so that we manage that, the things that need to expire after the four years for retention. Uh, but right now we don't have a space limit. We, uh, we have a lot of accounts and we have a lot of users, so we're good. Yes, yes, it'll be in product. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah, we're not worried about the space. Okay, thank you.